we're told that we should be putting out at least one piece of content every single day. This is how you do it faster with AI. You find a topic that works. So here we have hiking boots. Let's say you're Eddie Bauer, a client I've worked with. How do you generate content? So you find different topics. There's a bunch of platforms that do this, HRFs, SEM Rush, Niels, uh, Uber Suggest, that will give you great keywords that will rank. You go and find a topic, and then you get, you go, I personally, when I'm working with clients from Vancouver, I'll go to Miami and search for the same keywords and see what content's ranking. I then take that content and I put it through it an AI paraphraser. So a lot of the AI tools that you guys know and love, Craftly, Quillbot does it really well. They have a one-click paraphraser. So no need to spend hours writing that blog every single day. You could literally go get a high-ranking one, paraphrase it, add your keywords, add your little formulas for success, and have it good to go. Then you have AI doing email outreach. So here are the results for one of the campaigns of a client that I have. All of these keywords, a lot, some of them with super high traffic, are coming from the blog. And now imagine these results replicated over 30 days in a month. We do this every day, and it takes us five to 10 minutes per day. Now, our a program, prompt programming, how to get ultra-specific spot-on results from AI rather than the generic, repetitive stuff that you see. I'm going to go through five prompts and then go through my personal favorite and what we've built our whole company on. First prompt is, I want you to act as. This one's one of the most common, so not my personal favorite. But you start out by saying, I want you to act as like a dermatologist or an L NLP expert. And that really sets the stage for telling ChatGPT you want an expert to write about that topic. Then you do, I will, which lays out the relationship between you and AI. So I will give you a product and a target customer. And then the last part of this is you will. And this is what you are going to provide the AI, so you, or what you want the AI to generate. So you will choose the product slogan or channel for promotion. Then the last part is laying out a specific response. So you telling it, OK, this is my target demographic. This is my audience. Now, the second one I'm going to show you is when ChatGPT provides a prompt. So this one's a fun one. You get ChatGPT to interview you and give you a prompt based on that. So ask me questions to solidify a woman's clothing brand. This is an example. And the fun thing about ChatGPT is you could then ask it follow-on questions. So you could lay out, you could use the first one where I want you to act as an expert, and then you could keep going and asking it questions based on that. Now this is, we're starting to get into the better prompts. These are more of my favorite because you're getting so much more accuracy, but feeding it data. So let's say you are a real estate agent and you sold 150 homes over asking. You could give it this data and tell it to provide you different outputs based on a, like in the format of a blog or an ad and it'll go do that. Now we're getting into few shot learning. This is when you give it a couple examples. Here, you're getting better. It's getting more accurate because you're showing it how you actually want it to perform. So what I always tell people is, do you just want an email? Or do you want an email that mimics one of the highest converting emails of all time? So we're tr constantly trying to beat out the general public of people that are using this tool. And the one way is to give it great examples. Here is a graph of the results of a test that they did on these students. They got AI to answer questions about math. And as you can see, the accuracy, when you're giving it barely any examples, it's like being at like a mere 20%. That's just like designing nice prompts. But then once you give it examples, it shoots up there. Fine tuning, when you want to give it larger sets, subsets of data, with ChatGPT, you could give it a couple examples, but there's that limitation of how much you could give it. So if you really want to get technical, you could go to the source, the GPT-3 playground, and you could actually train it with 
hundreds of examples from your industry. And this is when you're getting that super customizable results where it knows your brand, your style, your voice, everything about you. And it's actually giving you outputs based on all those formulas that we know and love. Here is a graph showing you with the top line, that's the latest from OpenAI. That's the model that we're currently using. As you can see, zero shot is just giving it a fancy prompt. One shot is giving it one example. Few shot is where we get crazy amounts of accuracy. And then fine tuning is even beyond this, where you're giving it 100 examples. That's where you're going to get that next level of content. So takeaways from here. Ask for tons of variations. The more, the better. And actually, when you're finding an AI copywriter that you want to use for more technical results, try to find one with reinforced learning. So with basically, when you're liking, favoriting, when you're then taking it into their text editor, it's actually using that data and feeding it back into it. I know some AI writers do that. And that means that it's fine tuning on your data. That's different from ChatGPT, but based on the same technology. But it's different because ChatGPT, you go to it, and each different time, it's not able to remember. Some AI writers have gotten around this by fine tuning based on whatever you're using. Then examples, pull from a variety of different sources. So I know we were building a LinkedIn post generator for our client, and we fed it all the best business entrepreneur LinkedIn posts that we could possibly find. The results were terrible. It sounded like a marketing brown, like it did not make sense at all. And then we tried feeding it different samples of data from like political LinkedIn posts or different LinkedIn posts from different industries. And even though we weren't using that for that use case, it was so much better because it was pulling from a variety of different data and styles and giving you so many more options. Now, one of my favorites is go straight to the source. So GPT-3 Playground, if you can get technical, that's when you're going to be able to really customize your chat GPT. Continue to refine based on the output. So make it funnier. Uh, when you're talking to chat GPT, you could say summarize this or expand or provide me more outputs. Another big takeaway is beware of data contamination. So one time I had this marketer training a tool that was super enthusiastic all the time, and she put exclamation marks on everything. And I kept seeing the outputs of the tools, and it was nonstop exclamation marks. And I realized we were fine tuning it, but because she was fine tuning it, the data was contaminated by too many exclamation marks. And then lastly, Chain training to hack long form. This is one of my personal favorites. So when you're dealing with long form copy, you ask ChatGPT or the technology to generate a 5,000 word essay. The quality is going to taper off over time. And so this one is hacking it, where if you ask it in steps, or if you use an AI copywriter that basically with a blog generates the headline first, and then from the headline generates the intro, then generates the outline, it takes a couple more minutes, but you're getting that like short form results with long form copy.